First tonight, Maine has a long, rich history that spans from the potato farms in Arusta County to the shipyards on the coast, all of which has been preserved by the Maine Historical Society. This year marks 200 years for the Maine Historical Society, making it the third oldest historical society in the nation. So what makes it so special and what keeps folks coming back? We wanted to find out. Most of the collections that we receive are gifted to our organization. We certainly do purchase, but on a much smaller scale. And we're very fortunate that people entrust us to care for their materials. Caring for and preserving materials is sort of what the Maine Historical Society is all about. And Maine Historical was found just after Maine became a state. And I think it was a period of time where, you know, the nation was new and people were really focused on this achievement of creating a new nation, creating a new state, and there was pride. And so there was a real desire to, to capture the, the memories and the experiences of the founding fathers and the development, early development of Maine is where it got its start. In fact, the Historical Society has so much history, it's had to move some of the collections to storage. In 2014, in a collaboration with the Portland Public Library, we established an off-site collections management facility because we have outgrown our footprint here in town and um, we're looking for ways to continue to collect without having the constraints of doing so here on Congress Street. So that's been really um, a, a big milestone in our history. As you can imagine, collecting over 200 years, basically every space on this campus was full. We couldn't use them. It wasn't great for the collection. So that's about 18,000 square feet that we opened up there five or six years ago. And that's really going to be critical to our future. Among the artifacts here are diaries, maps of Maine, clothing from years past, even a lock of George Washington's hair, to name a few. Early photography is also a specialty. Daguerreotypes, ambrotypes, tintypes. Including this photograph of Dolly Madison. Dolly Madison is, uh, was First Lady of the United States uh, during the War of 1812 and is credited with saving the artwork in the White House when the British burned Washington. But nothing compares to the childhood home of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, which was donated by his sister back in 1901. Longfellow was such a worldwide celebrity um, throughout his life, so the house really was a shrine through, from the 1830s, 40s, and 50s on, and people would show up from around the world to see the home of the great Longfellow. So his sister w was living here and hosting that and had that sense of his role in American culture and history. So when she died in 1901, she left uh, the house to Maine Historical Society with the agreement we make our headquarters here. The house has been restored to its former 1850s glory. Almost everything you see here once belonged to Longfellow or his family, giving guests a unique experience that quite literally makes you feel as if you're stepping through time. 2001, we completed a major restoration of the house, so a lot of TLC and a lot of care in terms of restoring the flooring and all the materials in the house, and that's when it was interpreted to the 1850s, which seemed like the most appropriate way to tell the story. That sounds like a lot of work to restore. Yeah, a lot of careful work, yeah. yes. <laughs> Every bit of wallpaper, carpeting, flooring, um, paint was, was redone and with meticulous research back to the original material, some of it was reproduced, some of it was restored. Are you two like a couple of kids in a candy store when, <laughs> when you guys get donations? Quite a few of us get to see collections as they kind of come through, everything from the intake process and recognizing those materials to making them available for research, to digitizing and then providing access when people want to do research. And what's really great about a place that's 200 years old is people will ask for things we didn't know we had and and you know, we can pull them up and never seen them before. So you get to see something new almost every day. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. As the Maine Historical Society marks 200 years, Bromage and Rice are looking to the future and all the moving pieces that will get them there. It does take a lot of time and a lot of expertise to really put this together. And we're fortunate that we have a lot of uh, tools in place to um, have the different communities help us out with the main memory network. And we have a project now to transcribe items online so anyone in the world can sign up to help us transcribe and make things more accessible. So relying on our community as well to 
help uh, draw attention to those materials is also a big port, uh, piece of the puzzle. People are so proud and love Maine so much that they almost can't get enough of it. So I think you know we, we're in a really unique position to be the conduit and the source of connection around that by bringing all these stories together, uh, making it clear how people participate and contribute to that. So I think um, you know Maine's a special place, and we're really lucky because we get to spend our our, our lives and our careers and our, our efforts really trying to focus and celebrate that. So also part of the Maine Historical Society's 200 year anniversary celebration is the Northern Threads exhibit we showed you last week, which shows off Maine fashion from the late 19th century. And Rob, as you can imagine, they receive all sorts of items and donations. They never know what they're going to get. Another story they shared was about finding an original declaration of independence in a collection of old maps that they had been sorting through. One day they were just going through it and out pops one of the original <laughs> 26 known copies to survive from the original printing back in 1776. So very, very cool at the Maine Historical Society. I did not know that the society had a lock of George Washington's right. hair. That alone <laughs> I thought was fascinating. And something that for people who maybe aren't close to Portland and can't get to yeah. the historical site, it's really cool is the main memory yes. network, which is yes. all the online photos. Mm -hmm. And, and they've, they're, they're well organized, so you can look things up by your town. You know, if you exactly. live in Machias or Millinocket or wherever, you just yep. look up the town. Or if you've got an interest in, say, sardine canning, you can look that up <laughs> and see what exactly. sardine industry was like in Maine. Really, though? 90 they have years everything ago. there. It's, all, it's, all, it's, it's fun, and you just you get lost exactly. in those photos because they are fascinating. Mm -hmm.